Dr. John Nkengasong is the director of Africa's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He joins me now from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Uh, good to see you, doctor. We, we, we've seen these moves in the West to provide these booster shots, uh, third doses. What, what is your reaction to that with the vaccination rates in Africa where they're at? Uh, the vaccination rates in Africa are ridiculously low. I mean, as we speak, a continent of 1.2 uh, billion people has vaccinated uh, fully only 1.75% uh, of its population. And our goal is to get to 60% of our population immunized by the end of next year. The only pathway for us to recover in this pandemic is for global vaccination to occur almost simultaneously. We cannot allow the virus to be circulating in some parts of the world and then some part of the world have full immunization there. That is a, clearly a formula for creating new variants, as we are seeing every day uh, across the world. So I think uh, we are not doing a good job at, as a whole in, in, in tackling this pandemic in the manner in which we should be. Do, do, do you think Western nations understand what you just said there, which is very important, and that is that variants develop in an environment where there is rampant spread? So it's, in, it's actually in the interest of wealthier nations to vaccinate poorer ones, isn't it? Because the wealthier nations will suffer if there is a vaccine-defeating variant. Uh, absolutely. I think just a few months ago, we didn't know about the, the Delta variant. Right, and we were all focused on the, the alpha and the beta variant, those variants that were isolated or identified initially in the United Kingdom and, and in South Africa. Then came the Delta variant. What we don't know is what we don't know, which is we don't mm -hmm. know if another even more virulent variant will emerge after the Delta. We are all talking about Delta, but nothing tells us from the biology of the virus that there will be not be another variant that is more aggressive and more threatening to the vaccines that are being administered there. So I think we are not addressing this uh, pandemic in, in a comprehensive way. As I and, said, and, the, and the key to that is, is, as you point out, vaccination. It's interesting, the WHO says that if the 11 rich countries that are either rolling out boosters or considering it this year were to give the shots to everyone over 50 years old, they would use up, I think it was 440 million doses of global supply. What damage does that do to poorer nations? That would be catastrophic. That would just further uh, uh, worsen the, the gap, the inequality gap. You just stated earlier that most countries in the world have immunized up to about 40, 50 percent of a population. And in uh, the continent of Africa, less than 2 percent of the population is fully immunized. If that was to happen, you even see that countries in Africa and other parts of the developing world will struggle uh, to even get to 10 percent of their population fully immunized. And let me just say it again. It would be uh, a risk for everybody that uh, we create, we continue to create this disequilibrium this and en enable the virus to keep circulating. The virus will circulate, it will mutate, it will lead to new variants and it will completely undermine even countries that have been fully vaccinated. Yeah, there was a study that showed low-income countries won't see, uh, achieve substantial levels of protection until 2023, which, which is frankly outrageous. How then to convince those richer nations to pause on the notion of boosters and, and share the doses with those in desperate need? Well, but what is, uh, to me, surprising about the booster uh, uh, scenario is that we have not seen any evidence yet that that is required. Uh, uh, except for certain very uh, specific category of people, like the amino uh, uh, suppressed. So, again, uh, we have said at the beginning of this pandemic that our response to the pandemic should be guided by good science and should be guided by good evidence and data and not speculation. So I think we are still uh, not certain and, and confused as to why there is uh, the narrative of doing a booster, whereas so many people in the world have not even received one shot of the, the, mm. the vaccine. And, and, and real quick, I mean, there are myriad impacts of, of COVID spread on poorer nations, aren't there? Not just, not just health implications. I mean, if, if, for example, in countries in Africa with a 2% vaccination rate have to lock down to curb spread, then the economic impacts are huge for already struggling economies, right? The stimulus for uh, recovering our economy is vaccination. Uh, mm. Vaccines save lives, vaccines save economy. I think that is clear. We, unless and until we get our population fully vaccinated and create 
this, the so-called herd immunity will continue to move from wave to wave. As we speak in Africa, about 32 countries are going through a third wave. Four countries are going through a, uh, the fourth wave. And you continue to see that pattern. And it will continue to uh, impact severely on the economy of the, the, the countries if we do not vaccinate wow. at scale and at speed. <sighs> Uh, Dr. John Nkengasong, thank you so much for your time. Uh, wish you well, and uh, hopefully the world is listening. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.